Houston Dodgers that will start out in L.A. on Friday. Cole is the only one pitching right now. It's undecided. Uh, is getting the ball for the Dodgers. Oh, that guy's so good. Undefeated. Never lost. He's never lost. Uh, but just going back on watching so much of uh, the Guardians and the Yankees and making John Carlos Stanton the MVP. John Carlos Stanton, if you hadn't noticed, he's old. And what we would consider in, in the game has a slow slider bat speed, bat speed. And when you watch guys that throw 100, and that's all, if you listen to anybody, that talks analytics or anybody uh, that is on any of these baseball programs, whether it's ESPN or the MLB channel or Fox or TBS, all they do is talk about velo, 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 velo. And yet you see most of these home runs given up to lower, let's just say below the fifth place, six, seven, eight, nine hitters. You are going to attack them with fastballs. You are not going to throw off speed stuff. You're certainly not going to, you know, put stuff in the hitting zone when you're ahead in the count. You put it in the ground. You put it outside the plate. Um, but I, I just don't think a lot of these pitchers today have that thought process that 20, 30 years ago were a guy like Stanton, the only thing he's going to get his bat speed up to is something at 88 miles an hour, not 98, not 95. Anything you throw above his hands or below his hands, there's no way he's getting the bat head out in time to hit those pitches. That's why he no longer stands with the hip facing forward. The hip is facing right field because his bat speed is so slow. He's cutting out part of his his batting stance in order to start his hip early. So if you if you're in these pitching meetings, which I was privy to for 13 years, you're you're sitting there going over the lineup. Every game, you're going over the lineup. You're going over all the different uh, scouting reports on these different players. What you should be throwing Glaber Torres. What you should not be throwing Glaber Torres. What you should, should be throwing John Carlos Stanton. What you shouldn't be throwing John Carlos Stanton. And to watch this Class A or any of these other guys that are getting beat on their second or third best pitch, shame on the people that either the analytics people that are calling these pitches – the pitching coach, the catcher, the pitcher not being smart enough to understand I'm going to attack him with my number one pitch until he can beat me with my number one pitch. That's what you do in the in these crunch time games. Um, so when you're sitting at home this winter and you're thinking, how in the world did I give up a home run to John Carlos Stanton or Edmonds or Will Smith, or one of those guys, that's probably what you'll be having nightmares about, is that I, I went against the scouting report, and I got beat by my second or third best pitch. Because to me, I won a world championship because everybody told us we could not beat the Pirates with fastballs. We could not beat the Oakland Athletics with fastballs. Two of the best hitting teams of the day back in the 90s, um, and, and that's what they were all about. They were trying to hit your best pitch, and they we just located them. That's all we did was locate them in, locate them away, set up stuff to make them chase outside the zone. We let Ricky Henderson hit 300 in the World Series because we didn't feel that Ricky Henderson alone could beat us. And that's, uh, again, I thought, listen, I thought that, that the Guardians did a great job on Soto and um, Aaron Judge the first couple times through the lineup, but then the bullpens went for their secondary pitches and got crushed. The Juan Soto home run was an off-speed pitch that he fought and fought and fought until he got to. And then once he got it, he killed it. He absolutely killed it. So I think, you know, hitters are smart enough to know I, I if I can survive long enough in an at-bat and I get the mistake pitch I'm looking for, I can beat you. And I just felt like, listen, uh, there was a lot of walks where guys were going against their best stuff. The Guardians continued to make mistakes um, because they went against everything that got them to that point in the season. And they, I think they just feared Judge and Soto so much that they didn't think guys like Stanton, guys like Claiber Torres, uh, guys like uh, you know Volpe could beat them. And th eventually those guys were the ones that beat. And, and again, you have to tip your hat to those guys because they have some really good at bats. They went the, I, I really, really tip my hat to Glaber Torres for changing his approach at the plate in that series against the Guardians. He decided, I'm not going to try to be pull happy. 
I'm going to shorten my yeah. stroke. I'm going to try to hit to right center. And that was one of the keys to him getting on and setting the table for guys in the lineup. Do you think that's why Luke Weaver on the flip side is so successful? Because he is just nothing but challenging every single pitch. Well, because Luke Weaver increased his velocity with his – his. all right, so when, when you get to a balance point, you call it a corkscrew, and where it brings your hip over uh, the the – rubber and so it gets you to hold a little bit longer his his holding longer wasn't making him successful so somebody changed him from a high leg kick guy to more of an explosive hip action he barely uses his leg he does not yeah. use his legs any longer barely. he uses his upper body his hips to get his velocity which again that's a lot of its drive line i'll give them credit that's what they do with guys but but it, it's like um, when you get to the end of the ropes with you, you, you'll do anything to stay in the big leagues and be successful. It also gave him the balance necessary to throw strikes. So now he can locate 95 to 98 mile an hour fastballs inside, outside, up, down. That's pitching. He's become a complete pitcher. And so now when he does throw a changeup, he can throw it in the dirt. He can throw it down in your hands. Uh, and and he's he's been very successful with that. So again, the difference between just throwing hard, like you saw with Michael Kopech at the beginning of last night's game, and actually spotting fastballs and, and locating fastballs, that's why Weaver has become successful again. And I think Clay Holmes, in the back of his head, he's afraid to throw his best pitch. And so that's why, okay, we'll bring you in after the starter in the fifth and sixth inning to where, listen, you're probably facing the softer part of a lineup and Weaver is the guy who's being more successful because another part of pitching too, and 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 I don't want to you know bloviate here, is you don't want to turn the lineup over too many times early in the game. But the more walks you do, the more that the lineup's going to turn over to where the eighth and ninth inning you're going to see the middle of the other team's order. You don't want that in the eighth and ninth inning. You want to see five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe the top of the order, and not have to face two, three, four, two, three, four, five. So the more times the lineup turns over in the course of a game, the more dangerous it gets for your bullpen at the end of the game. The more walks you have early in the ball game turns the lineup over where you face the heart of the lineup, which is an absolute nightmare for the even even class A. And when he had to face the three, four, five guys over and over and over, they knew what he was coming with. He kept getting beat with his off-speed stuff. Well, my theory, too, with both these losing teams is that their pitchers just could not locate they were very yeah. inaccurate and i thought and, they were tired and maybe that's yeah. what they're they're trusting more of their off speed because they can throw that where they want to throw it versus their fastball because Which that's a great point a big question mark so I when, know when i going. would have a tired arm i could control my breaking ball a lot more because your breaking ball really? your shoulders in okay. your shoulders in, but it doesn't have the velocity you want right so the velocity is a is three four five mile an hour slower again Throwing that to Stanton would be a mistake. Right. Like we we had certain guys in a in a batting order were like, you know, let's say Don Slot, Mike Lavalier, guys like that. You're like, guys, don't get beat on your breaking balls with these guys. So the reason why a guy's hitting like six, seven, eight, nine in the order, the reason why they're hitting there is their speed, their bat speed has slowed down. Whether it was Jazz Chisholm, whether it was Rizzo, whether the, that's why they're hitting there. Those guys are looking off speed. That's what they can hit. Now, Stanton, who's a, a fastball known hitter, he was crushing and killing off-speed pitches because 88, 86 was right on his bat speed. And that's that's where I think the Guardians, again, the Guardians, they, they panicked where they should have just stayed with their hard stuff. Plus, they didn't have good command at all. Exactly. They had a yeah. ton of walks in this series. And, and what happens with a walk is... Get a guy on base. You got to be quick to the plate. You cut out a lot of your your wind up to uh, quick pitch and get to the plate. Slide step, whatever you want to call. I'm trying to stay with with today's verbiage um, again. And and so now you're losing. This is why I let guys just steal on me because I wasn't going to quick pitch you. I was going to stay with my power and my high leg kick. And I'm going to throw 97, even though my arm was killing me in October of 90. I was throwing 97. At that point, I wasn't throwing 98 to, to 100. I was throwing like 93 to 97, topping out there. But I only had to throw 15, 20 pitches. 
So for me, now I'm going to hand it off to the next guy who now Norm Charlton is throwing 97 or 96, but he's locating. And now once he gets ahead of you, he could throw a fork ball in the dirt. I would throw a slider in the dirt. I was not going to put a breaking ball in the hitting zone in, in, in the after the season was over and let you beat me on that. You would have to beat me 97 in, and I was going to jam you. And again, I think a lot of these guys don't understand the concept of I was taught – Never let a guy get extended. Never let a guy get extended on a fastball to right center. Throw it like elbows in. Throw it right at his elbows and above his hands to try to challenge that guy. It looks great to the hitter, but he can't get extended and it jams him. And a lot of guys are afraid to come inside in 2024. Well, let's talk a little verbiage before we get into this World Series stuff. I, this is something I'm not going to conform to. I'm just not. I know what a slider is. I know what a curveball is. I know the angle of a sidearm fastball. Right. None of those, to me, are this new term sweeper. I am so it's sick garbage. of this word. Yeah. The, like, this word is just, I don't know what that is. Let's just call it a sweeper. And, that, and now Jeff Pass, and I will single him out because I think he's a jackass. <laughs> uh, but to call a 12-6 to six curveball sweeper, Something that, like Mike Mussina, myself, a lot of guys, John Smoltz in the Hall of Fame, uh, Nolan Ryan, I could go on and on and on, David Cohn, some of the best in my business when I played, we all threw the same curveball. It's from the same arm slot as your fastball. You're just turning your palm in, and you're pulling it down from being on top of it. So the rotation is going down, where if I'm throwing a fastball, it's spinning backwards. There's there's no difference. It's a 145-year-old game. Just because you're changing the verbiage, it's not a death pitch or a death curve or any of your bull crap that you're throwing out there right now. It's the same stuff and you're aiming it for the back peak of the plate. These guys aren't doing anything differently than I did 30 years ago. Stop trying to give them some kind of new credit because you have some kind of rap soda machine or some kind of, of, of a mechanism that you can actually now tell the rotation of this. The same rotation that puts so many Hall of Famers, Steve Carlton, Sandy Koufax. You're going to tell me a guy today has a better curveball than Sandy Koufax? No freaking way. <laughs> there's not one guy in the big leagues that throws a better curveball than Sandy Koufax. So if there's ever a death pitch or a death death ball, it was Sandy Koufax back in the day. Which And in his first five years, if you look up his statistics, could not command. And once he got command of that pitch, he was unhittable. But you know what it did to him? By 30 years old, 31 years old, because they didn't have the technology to fix it, he had to retire because his elbow hurt so much and he couldn't take enough painkillers to deaden the pain. But trying to say sweeper or death ball or any other BS, it's the same. It's it's If you can locate these pitches, teach young kids. I can't, If they're 12... 15, 18, teach them how to pitch. Don't give them fancy names. Don't 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 have <laughs> so some true. influencer on YouTube show them an improper grip on this pitch to hurt their arm. You and I do enough with orthopedics to try to help these kids from hurting themselves. Then you turn on the TV and these idiots give it a cool name and the kids try to throw it without proper teaching and hurt themselves. That's what I'm against. No way Shohei gets out there on the mound. Like, I don't think you know, he can. Mid inning, like he, he tells coach, I'm ready to go. In the sixth inning, we throw him out there for three outs. I think, listen, the Dodgers are in such good place where I think they've got the, the enough to win these games. But if they lose, they'll, they'll regret po- possibly not speeding him up. But I think he's so ahead of the rehab period that, you know, if he did it, because maybe if he only had one Tommy John in the last five years, you'd be like, okay, let's try it. But he's had two Tommy John. So you're on your third uh, on the collateral ligament, third elbow. whether it's a cadaver, yeah. whether it's from your hamstring, it's the third one. And at third, he's not even 30. No. I don't think God intended you to have three of them in your lifetime span. Who do you lean on as far as these pitching staves are concerned? You got Cole Rodon and then question marks on I three. Like, I like, honestly. Got Yamamoto, Flaherty, Bueller, and question marks on four. But then, yeah, I, I don't I know. I favor the Yankees right now. Why? I just, I, I like Weaver. Nobody knows Weaver. So, Weaver, remember Frankie Rodriguez when Frankie Rodriguez just jumped on the scene? Yeah. Um, so, some of these guys, that that's why I thought Class A would be great. The, the, the Yankees haven't really seen him that much. Nobody really knows him that much. Um, just stay with the heat. Um, I think Weaver is not afraid of the moment. I think he's been around long enough to know I'm tired of failing. So this this is like, 
Uh, he knows this is his moment. He's not afraid of the moment that they keep saying. He's, or high leverage. I, I love that term. High, high leverage. leverage. Every time high I stepped leverage. on a major league field was a high leverage game. You know why? Because those are the best in the business. One through nine, best in the business. Every moment I was on a major league field was high leverage. You're not making it seem like today's game is more important than yesterday's game. Or the seventh inning is more tougher than the first inning. They're all tough. Every hitter's freaking tough. So, you know, when I, whenever I hear a, a dipstick say, oh, this is a high leverage situation, dude, they're all high leverage. That's why there's only 750 major leaguers in the big leagues right now. I think of Rokio, like a week ago, yeah. he was the best. And- this is a high leverage catch. Right, no. It was a high leverage catch, catch in April. <laughs> it's, you know, it's even more high leverage yeah. now than it ever has been. Yeah. Exactly. Never know. No, Never it's know. just insane. So anyway, um, I think it's going to be a great World Series. I think that the bullpens are in the game too much. Um, can we reverse it and get starters in there? We'll t- maybe we'll talk not about this that tomorrow, year. Wednesday, Wednesday. Exactly. Not the, there's year. not enough healthy starters. By the way, I know you'll be happy about this. Uh, Nestor Cortez is back on the roster for the World Series yeah. for the Yankees. We so. expected that, yeah. um, and he probably will get some work. I'm interested to see if, um, what's his face, the other starter there. Stroman. Uh, Stroman is on the roster. That'll be I interesting. I yeah. That's a shame. That guy deserves it. He helped them get there. Anyway, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back, do dibbles and bits. 91 Southbound, you're getting a few pockets around exit 